So welcome to this video demonstration of how to configure Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure. In the previous demonstration, we showed how simple it was to deploy Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure and also the considerations around that deployment. Now we're going to walk through what we need to do to actually configure Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure and go and create your first backup policy. The first thing you'll notice once the appliance is deployed is you're presented with this getting started page. We have three critical tasks that must be carried out. The first one is to add your Microsoft Azure connection. So we do this by clicking on account and we simply click add. We're asked for a name, so we'll just give this a name of demo account. And then we're asked what service account type do we want to create? Do we want to create this service account automatically? So this is where we just authenticate with Microsoft Azure and then Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure goes away, creates a service account, creates a service principle and applies the privileges. Or do we want to create a service account manually and specify it with its own credentials? For the purpose of this demonstration, we're just going to create this automatically. But if you want to go and create your own, you can go and read the knowledge base articles that tell you the minimum set of permissions required to create that service account. So we're going to say oh, create this automatically. And we're asked to essentially authenticate in a very similar way to how you authenticate your TV services. So we copy this code to the clipboard and we click this URL. It asks us to paste the code and then asks us what Microsoft Azure account do we actually want to add. So I'm going to pick this one and that's it. If we go back to Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure, we can now see that we're authenticated as that Azure account. We simply click Next. If we're a service provider, we have the ability to add specific application Active Directory groups so that we can authenticate and use those for permissions. We click Next, we're given a summary, and we click Finish. So now that we've added our Microsoft Azure account, the next step is to create some backup repositories. So this is where we store our long-term data out in these Azure Blob backup repositories. Now there's a few considerations to note about this. And if we go to the helpcenter.veeam.com, we can find all that configuration information that we need. So we need a storage account and we need a container created in that storage account. So we do that by going to our Microsoft Azure account. We go to our storage account. We see here that we already have one called VB Azure storage account. And what I need to do is create a new container. So I'm going to add a container and we'll call this Demo Container Central US. And we can see that I've created that container successfully. Now, if we go back to Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure, we can add that container as our repository. So we'll just call this Demo Container Central US. We pick our Azure account. We pick that storage account that I was just talking about. And then we're presented with our list of containers. So we can see there's the one I just created. Now we want to create a new folder because we've just created this. So we'll call this demo folder. If we want to have any encryption at rest, so when all our backups are stored in our Azure Blob backup repositories, we can actually specify passwords to encrypt all that data. And then to, when you want to restore it, you need to make sure you have that password to unencrypt that data. So we'll leave that blank for now. We'll check our summary and we'll simply click finish. We have the ability to go to the sessions log to see how this is being created. So we can see that we've created the folder, we've built out this backup repository in our Azure Blob storage. So the final 
configuration step that we need to take is to configure our workers. Now, again, on helpcenter.veeam.com, we have lots of information around how you configure the workers and what's needed. But essentially, workers are virtual machines that are spun up in the regions to perform backup and restore tasks. This helps dramatically reduce the costs so data isn't being moved around or between different regions and to different object storage buckets outside of these regions. The workers perform all these tasks locally to the workloads that are being protected. So we do this by going to Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure, picking our workers tab and simply clicking add. We choose the region that we want to protect and then we have the ability to define the number of worker instances. So we, do we want a minimum of one, a maximum of five? How we configure these is based upon how many workloads we have and how much data we need to move. So you can actually specify that you want a minimum of three, for example, if you have to move a lot of data during a particular backup window. So we'll leave these as the default. Then we come to the virtual networks. We can actually create a new one here. So we're just going to call this Central US Worker Demo. And we'll call the subnet the same. Then we pick our security group that we want to use for our workers. And we click Next. We're presented with a summary, which shows us all our configuration options and we click Finish. We're now ready to go and create a backup policy because Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure has been fully configured. So we exit our configuration window and to create our backups and actually protect our virtual machines, we do this through policies. Now policies are very straightforward to set up. We click Add, we give it a name, we pick the Azure Active Directory we want to use, and then we pick our regions. So we have the ability to select all regions or individual regions. So for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna pick Central US. We specify our resources. So do we wanna protect all resources in that region or do we wanna break it down? So we can break this down by subscriptions, by resource groups, even tags or individual virtual machines. So I'm gonna use resource groups. We see here, I have a resource group called backup. We have the ability to exclude resources if we didn't want to include virtual machines in our backups. Then we come to our snapshot settings. So this uses the native Azure snapshots to take backups and snapshots of your virtual machines, helps keep your RPOs low. We'll leave these as the default to number of restore point seven and daily. So that gives me a week's worth of snapshots that I can recover to. Then we come to the backup settings. So this is where we configure our policies to offload our backups out to those object storage repositories we created. So we select the repository we want. There's the one we created earlier. And we define our retention period. And we can see here that we going to keep this for 21 days, but we can specify months if we want to, and then the schedule as well. We then come to the cost estimation. This shows you, based on Microsoft Azure list prices, how much this policy is going to cost to run on a per monthly basis. The final step is policy settings. So do we want to enable notifications? We check our summary and our policy is created, and it will run at the specified schedule that we have created for this policy. So through the magic of video demonstrations, we can see now that our policy is running, we have two protected VMs, and we have two instances. We can see that these are backed up and we have our restore points. So congratulations, Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure is deployed and configured very quickly, very easily. For more information, go to veeam.com.